<clears throat> morning, we'll pick up in Luke chapter 11. There we read of Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray. As part of this lesson, Jesus taught the following. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? And then as we fast forward a little bit to right before the end of Jesus' life, we find Jesus in the garden. And at that time, Jesus knew that he was going to die. He had known that since he came to the earth and that he would be raised again. In Matthew 16, we read, from that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. And yet, knowing all of this, in the garden that night before his death, he asked the Father that he might be spared when he prayed, O oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. From there, as we know, Jesus goes on to die on the cross. So the question that has been asked is, did the Father hear the Son and his prayer in the garden? Did he give his Son a stone or a serpent? Or did he really listen to his prayer? It's a very serious question for us to consider today. And as we begin to think about that question, I'd like to frame it in terms that maybe we can better relate to. And for us as parents, if we would just imagine for a minute that our child is looking up to us and is about to die for whatever reason. As the child looks up, he's got pleading eyes, he's got loving eyes, he's got trusting eyes, and he asks you to save their life. And your answer has to be no. And we can just imagine how heart-wrenching that decision, that statement would have to be in that time. And the pain that we would feel as a parent to tell our child, no, you have to die. And as difficult as that would be for us, consider what the father had to do when he faced that decision. When the son asked him to spare his life. And that that decision was infinitely more profound than anything we could face as humans. In that moment, when Jesus prayed his prayer, God the Father was asked by his only son that his life might be spared. This was a son that was without sin, one that had served the Father and his fellow man perfectly throughout his life, one that had done no wrong to anyone, and one that would have to bear the sins of all mankind so that they could be saved. So in that moment, did the Father hear the son's prayer? And we answer this morning, absolutely he did. Look at how Jesus phrased his request in his prayer. He says that this cup might pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And again, the second and third time, he says, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. So Jesus made his prayer subject to the will of the father. And the father knew that Jesus' sacrifice was the only way that mankind could be saved. The Father's decision and his will are expressed beautifully in John 3.16, where he states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And let's read that again, this time with emphasis, because a lot of times we read this by rote, and it just flows and goes by very, very quickly. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Thayer tells us that that word translated so in this passage marks the degree of the intensity of the word loved. So that we should understand this phrase as so God so greatly loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's how much the father loved us. Yes, he loves us and wanted mankind to have a means of salvation and he gave his only son to that end. And that means of salvation was absolutely through his son, Jesus. In Colossians chapter one, we read, for it pleased the father that in him, Jesus, all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross, his death. So Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for us, and he became the perfect mediator between us and God. Two passages in Hebrews, first one in chapter 4, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. 
And in chapter 10, but this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. And consider also the love of Jesus that he showed for us in freely giving his life for us and all that he continues to do for us. We read in John chapter 13, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, meaning through his death. Now Paul states this ongoing work is still with us. It is Christ who died for us and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Jesus loved us and he continues to love us and work for us. He was the perfect and necessary sacrifice for us and our sins. And he humbled himself and was subject to the will of God the Father, even as he prayed in the garden. So listen now to how Jesus' prayer is recounted over in the book of Hebrews. For it says in chapter 5 there, Jesus, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So we see that the father did hear the son, and the father's will was completely done. He knew that Jesus' sacrifice would provide for our salvation and the remission of our sins. And it's for this reason that Jesus came to this earth and died for us on the cross. And today we remember him just as he has instructed by partaking of this supper in just a few moments. We remember his body and his blood and that his death allows us to be reconciled to God. And we do this to proclaim his death until he comes again. We'll now partake of the supper. <clears throat> 